I'm like every guy at every guitar store ever right now. <laughs> to show you my brand new custom guitar. Um, this has been about five months in the making and it's finally here. <laughs> I gotta tell you, the road to getting to this guitar has been ridiculous. I originally planned on having this done for my 25th birthday in June. We're now at the end of November and it's finally finished in my hands. Uh, I'm just so happy to have this. Look at that beauty. Look at it. Ah, it's beautiful. The matching headstock. Yes. So this guitar uh, has a funny story to it, actually. It's a war moth body, basswood. Bought it online. Uh, the neck is an EVH Stripe Series replacement neck that I got from Stratosphere. Shout out to Stratosphere. They actually came through with the, a lot of the parts that I needed. Um, next, I want to talk about the paint because how this paint job came about is actually a funny story. So, when I originally wanted to do this guitar, I wanted it to be a bit of a Mick Mars tribute guitar. You know, he has this red Strat I saw photos of. It might have been like on FU Tone's website. Shout out to Adam. We'll talk about that later. Uh, but there's this red Strat that Mick Mars has with the white pickguard and the red body. And it had a matching headstock paint job to it. And I just thought it looked so cool. So, I wanted to do something like that. But then I got thinking, I was like, ah, oh, you know what? I got this custom leather jacket painted by Christian Benner for my 25th birthday. And it was Eddie Van Halen inspired. It was red. It had the black and the white stripes. And there was some really cool like black and white paint flung on it. It just looked badass. Like, it's awesome. So I saw that and I was like, oh man, wouldn't it be cool to have a guitar that kind of matches that? So I started painting this and it actually turned out to be a Frankenstein, like an EVH Frankenstein. If you look on the back of the body, it actually still has some of the stripes on it, as you can see. And you can see some of the relicking that I tried to do on the heel there. Uh, here's some original photos of it through progression, starting with the white and the black. And then I, I, I got to the stripes and I just didn't like the way it looked. So I ended up just throwing all kinds of red paint on it. Thick, thick layer of paint. It, it was too much, but uh, it came out okay. Still a lot of the stripes are popping through if you really, really look at it uh, in the top there, you can see. But uh, I looked at that jacket and also I'm a huge Phil Collin fan of Def Leppard. Like Phil is like, God, I love you, Phil. Man, let's, let's talk, Phil. Uh, <laughs> I saw these Jackson guitars that he did, the PC1s, a couple of years ago. He did like, I think it was like a limited 100 of them. One of them actually got featured on the TV show Pawn Stars. And it was black and he just flung a whole bunch of different paint colors on it. It was green, yellow, red, blue. Like it was, it looked really cool. Almost like a, like a Pollock painting, you know? So I was like, between my jacket and Phil Collin, I was like, well, we got the Eddie Van Halen. We've got the Mick Mars. Let's get some Phil Collin in there. So I just took some white paint and some black paint and... Kind of, I used the black spray can to just make some circles in certain parts. You can see it more predominantly on the back. Uh, but on the front, it's kind of layered in there. And then I just took the white and just splashed it everywhere. And voila, this is the final product. Uh, and it looks awesome. It sounds even better. I'll get to that in a second. But I want to talk about the specs. My guitar tech, Corey Daibo, who's played in numerous bands. He's a legend in my area. Uh, he did all of the work on the guitar, assembling everything. I basically picked all the parts and he put everything together. I painted, he built. So we got DeMarzio pickups in here. We got a uh, Super 3. We got an HS2 in the middle. And we've got the Steve Lukather transition neck in this guitar. It sounds incredible. Um, pick guard was Stratosphere. Uh, we got an EVH low friction volume pot and a just normal tone. Both of them are labeled tone, a la Van Halen. Uh, we got a five-way switch, an EVH branded Floyd on that as well. You, oh, I'll cut to another more footage of that. There's an EVH branded Floyd on that with a D tuna that's red. I actually had them. I had, I ordered us custom. I had to get the red one. I I just had to. It wasn't necessary. It actually came with a D-Tuna on the bridge when I bought it from Stratosphere. But I was like, I need red because why not? Uh, on the back, if we go to the guts of the guitar, 
We've got a 37 millimeter brass block courtesy of FU Tone with the red springs. And I believe the claw and screws are titanium. I originally bought the brass ones, but Corey, I forget what he said about the claw, but um, yeah, actually, I want to play a clip talking to Corey about this new guitar and what he had to do to build it and everything, because there was a lot of routing uh, that went into this guitar. And well, you know what? Actually, let's go to that right now. Let's let's talk to Corey and see what he had to say about building this beautiful axe. All right, here it is. Look at this guitar. Here, let Corey hold it. Fresh out of the baby carriage. Oh my God! Look at this. See, now I'll talk about the history about the guitar later on, but that's the overall look. But there was a lot of work that went into this, believe it or not, because. I mean, it really is a Frankenstein of parts. So what did you have to do with the necks, like, pocket and everything? Well, we know you like these EVH necks so much, but they got a longer heel. So we routed out the heel and made sure that fit like a glove. And uh, being that it's a Fender-style body, the uh, the pocket is much shallower. And oh, I've got to go on to the pickguard, make it all fit, and make it all look good, make it look tight and right. And So you had to cut the actual pickguard and everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got a lot of dust up my nose that day. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how, like, how the end of the neck is so close to the pickup. Like. Yeah, that's it. The EVH uh, heel is, like, much further this way. And you got an overhang, and they got their truss rod uh, nut there that's large. So everything is, like, large. Yeah. So it sends everything that way. And... Uh... It's loud. It's built for speed. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Sweet. Well, yeah. I've got to play Eddie Van Halen's guitars himself, and this is pretty darn close. That's true. So you went on tour with Van Halen, did a couple of shows. Oh, yeah. What's... We, did like a, we did like 11 shows, the final Van Hager shows. Yeah. <laughs> so and I got to try his rig. And we're going to have to get you on the podcast guitars. to tell those stories. Yeah. <laughs> but this, how does this guitar hold up to Eddie's actual guitar? They're very similar. Same, same construction, same wood. Uh, I was actually one day off of uh, when we got on the tour the night before they had the original Frankenstein guitar, so I missed it by one day. Oh man! I played all the others. Yeah. But um, his tech Lonnie Totman told me that uh, it was suffering a little bit of issues too. There, there was cracks from the studs, and the bridge was moving forward, so mm. the guitar wasn't super playable anymore anyway. So, but would have been cool to see, but I yeah. Guess. To hold the original. Yeah. But that neck is essentially like the same neck. I mean, it's, it's the Wolfgang profile on it. So I, Yeah, I guess that's the shape. I believe they were narrower in the beginning from what I recall. But, yeah. uh, you know, it's like uh, they're, the shape's all kind of gradually in the uh, production process yeah. change a little bit. See, I don't, I don't know how different the actual neck profile is from the like normal Charvel lines, like a San Dimes, because they all come out of the same factory, but... Apparently they're similar, so I could have probably just gotten one from like a like a Charvel replacement neck, but this was specifically an EVH. There's an EVH logo behind the paint, but convenient, convenient. <laughs> nice paint too. Who did that? I did that. There, there it is. All right. Well, enjoy. Cool. So there you go. Thanks a lot to Corey for doing such a great job on this beautiful axe. If you need any guitar work done at all, like no matter where you are in the world, you ship it to Corey. He'll take care of it like it's one of his own and do the best job, probably better than anybody, honestly. Uh, I'll leave a link in, a, in the description to Corey's profile on Facebook. You can add him. I mean, jeez, just fantastic. Let's. What do you say we give this thing a go and see how it sounds? Um, not you plugged into my usual guitar rig today. I am simply plugged into a Boss GT10 direct to Pro Tools. And this is how it sounds. <laughs>
that go again? I can't play it. Well, there you go. <laughs> impression of everybody at every guitar store ever. My custom Frankenstein-y guitar-y thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there you go. Thanks to all the uh, awesome manufacturers for making the best parts in the world possible. Shout out to Adam at FU Tone for the awesome brass block. You need one. I have a titanium one in this one. It's titanium. So both of them are rocking FU Tone. Both of these guitars. Oh my goodness. And they howl and scream. They sound great. So. There you go. I know I'm no guitarist that's, you know, I'm not, I know I'm not like the best shredder in the world, but uh, I know I'm not the do. But hey, I could play a good Shania Twain. Rock this country. All right, that's it. See you later.